Okay, I'm going to make a little video to see uh, how uh, rejuvenation works on my Mortal Kombat 1 monitor. Uh, this is a new BNK Precision 467 Restore Analyzer that I got off of eBay. Uh, I say new, it's new to me. It's probably very old. They started making them back in the 70s, uh, maybe as early as 1970. And uh, they probably cost, you know, over a thousand, maybe as much as two thousand dollars for a unit similar to this back in the day. And uh, this one's in excellent condition. It was a little dirty. I cleaned it up, bought it off eBay for seventy-five bucks with free shipping, and uh, I actually got mine for around sixty-five or sixty-four bucks because I had built up some of the eBay bucks from buying things, and I was able to cash those in. So for about maybe sixty-four dollars, I got a unit that hopefully will work, and I can use it in the future on other monitors if I need to. But the Mortal Kombat 1 monitor is really dull, and uh, I did a cap kit, and it didn't do anything to that. And, and the flyback transformer, I don't guess, needs to be replaced. I was thinking about replacing it, but you know, most people seem to be in the consensus saying that uh, if they work, then uh, they're fine. So I'm not going to try to replace that. And I figured if I tried to re replace the monitor or the picture tube or anything like that, that uh, you know, it would come in to be, you know at least a few hundred dollars. So I figured I'd try this first and as cheap as I got out with this this unit, I think I'm going to be doing pretty good. If I can fix even one monitor with it, it'll probably pay for itself easily. But uh, everything seems to be in great condition. I took this thing completely apart, took it out of the case. It's made into the casing uh, and uh, it's in really good shape. Uh, I just checked general things when I pulled the unit out of the casing. There's a few screws holding it in from the back side and one from the front and everything looks great. Um, plugged it up just to see that it did power up and uh, did a few adjustments on it that I could do without actually hooking it to a monitor. And this is a completely new process to me. I don't know exactly how to do this. Uh, I'm going to be referring to uh, some online articles telling how to uh, use the BNK testers and uh, there's a chart on there that looks up even more modern picture tubes to show you what to set some voltages to for the heater and different things like that before you get started on the testing processes. But uh, these meters can uh, do tests to the CRTs, the cathode ray tubes themselves, and um, fix some problems like shorts and stuff like that. There's shorts for the cathodes and shorts for the the heater inside, different things like that. Some of those it can fix and I think the heater shorts it can't fix but um, basically what it does is it sends a, a little more power, a little more uh, higher higher power through there than what it's uh, normally designed to run with and uh, I, you know, all I can tell, you know, I'm not an expert at it, haven't even done it once, is that uh, it blows off buildup off of the cathode ray guns and uh, it makes them to where I guess they're emitting properly again or at least better than they were. And some people say uh, if you go with the, the highest power setting on here, like a full restore, that it can damage a picture too. I want to start off with what I think on here they just, they just call it clean and balance. That's what I'm going to start off at and I'm going to follow the instructions that are in a PDF file that I think came directly off the B&K website telling you how to use all of their rejuvenators and uh, if that doesn't work on the guns then maybe we'll f try a full rejuvenation I don't think it can get much worse the monitor has decent color display and you know pretty good geometry and pretty good focus but uh, it just is really dull and, and not very bright at all compared to my other arcade machines and I feel like maybe this can help so uh, Right now I'm going to cut away and just show you what the monitor looks like right now and my video camera is not the best so you may not be able to tell any difference in the before and after but I'm going to make a before and after anyway. Here we are at the front of the Mortal Kombat machine. We have the uh, monitor and the machine of course fired up and uh, I'm just showing you what the display looks like. I have all the lights in the room turned off and I have the windows partially blocked. Uh, it's in the evening anyway. It's about 7 p.m. here on the east coast. but. Uh, I just want you to know that I've got a tripod set up and the after video is going to be set up exactly the same way. It'll probably be a little darker outside but there's not much light coming into this room so this is just to give you a comparison to the before and after and after I edit the video I'll probably actually either show them side by side or or show a before and after with a clip right before and one right after uh, once the video's been edited. But uh, like I said, I did my best adjustments to this monitor the best way I knew how. Um, used the screen and focus controls on the flyback and uh, and even adjusted the uh, cutoffs and, and the gains and stuff for the three different colors, the red, green, and blue. 
uh, did some adjustments with the remote uh, adjustment board that's right under the control panel and you know adjusted black level and brightness and or they call it black level I guess brightness is what some of them say uh, contrast different things like that nothing could really make a difference in how bright and vivid the monitor looked it just to me it looks dull in this video you probably can't tell but I've got a Mortal Kombat 2 machine right here to the right when I fire it up it just it makes this one look terrible because it's so bright and all I've ever done to it was a cap kit and it straightened out some waviness and some other problems that it had but uh, this one it's got generally pretty decent focus uh, you know good screen geometry uh, the colors look really good they look pretty accurate once I adjusted them they might need a little more adjustment but it's just not bright enough and you can play it especially in a dimly lit room if you get a lot of sunlight coming in here or turn the lights on though um, just a little bit of glare that comes off of the lights in the room and from the windows it, it really makes it to where you don't want to play unless you darken the room and uh, you know, I'm just hoping to improve that and so, you know, for the minimal cost of that rejuvenator, if I just fix this monitor, I'll be happy. And uh, I don't know if that rejuvenator has been calibrated or anything, you know. Uh, it may have not been used for years because when I got it, it had a musky smell to it, you know. Slight bit of mildew on the casing and I, I cleaned all that up, took everything apart, get it a good, did a good wipe down to it and uh, hopefully it's working properly you know all the meters seem to move up and down when I make adjustments and stuff and I haven't actually hooked something up to it to do a, a proper test or anything so I just hope it doesn't do any kind of damage you know I'll just I'll go by the directions what I found on the net and uh, has a book with it and it seems to be identical to what's on the net except for they have some updated tube charts for newer tubes that weren't listed with that book because the book that came with it like I said this unit was probably made in the 70s and some of these tubes weren't even being manufactured at the time so uh, I found the setup for the the heater voltage and stuff like that and uh, you know any other settings I need to do before I start testing and that's what we're going to do now so I'm going to cut away from here and show you a little bit of the testing process I'm not going to show you all of it because it's going to be a little trial and error on my part as far as like having to read and go back and start getting ready for each little test it, it shouldn't take very long they say that the actual rejuvenation process is only a few seconds but I just want to make sure that I'm really careful and have the dial set properly don't want to set anything wrong and uh, you know make the monitor worse or destroy the tube you know so uh, we'll cut away from here and, and start with what we're going to do Okay, we're at the back of the Mortal Kombat machine. I've uh, flipped it off via the switch, but we're going to disconnect the power. So, go ahead and pull our plug here. Make sure there's no voltage going into the machine itself. And the next thing you have to do, and this is uh, pretty critical from what I've read in the forums and stuff, you could uh, ruin your rejuvenator if you don't discharge your tube. And you've probably seen videos online. It's not very good to light up in here. But right up in there is your anode cap for your CRT, and uh, we have to slide a tool underneath there to uh, discharge the monitor, get any voltage that's left in there out, so we don't, you know, damage the rejuvenator from the voltage that's built up inside the tube. Some of these do discharge themselves, but we're not going to take the risk. I'm not familiar enough with them to know uh, if this one does or not. Uh, I've been told they do, uh, and uh, when I done the cap kit to this one. Uh, it didn't have any pops at all and I did it two or three times and, and waited several minutes in between and uh, actually while I was actually doing it with the screwdriver and uh, the thick heavy gauge wire and the alligator clip I actually popped the anode cap off by accident and I did that the last time I did a, a cap kit just pushing in on the, the anode uh, clip a little hard and uh, it just came loose so easy you know I was like well shoot you know the chassis doesn't have any problem now being taken loose since I've already done that and I kept sticking the screwdriver in the hole just to make sure that it was discharged and I never got even the slightest pop but you know maybe my monitors do discharge themselves and I guess I'm lucky with that but I'm going to take the precaution anyway so I've got the tool right here and this is just homemade uh, just a screwdriver and uh, I put a a clamp on there to clamp some uh, heavy gauge wire to the uh, actual screwdriver and uh, it's far enough away from the handle so I can you know handle it without getting hurt and I wrapped it with electrical tape to make sure the charge doesn't try to go through me and uh, the other end I've actually uh, soldered on the other end of the heavy gauge wire and uh, also put some tape around it just to be extra careful but the wire is actually soldered in there it's probably hard to focus on in this video but 
that's what we're going to do now. Let me cut away from here for a second. Okay, I'm about to just charge the monitor. Got my lead coming down, and uh, it is clipped onto the framework here of the chassis. And probably need to put a new alligator clip on mine. Mine's kind of small, but I try to make sure it gets a good bite. And uh, it extends all the way up to where my hand is right now on the screwdriver, and I'm holding it kind of near the middle or the end. And I know it's not easy to see in this lighting, but I have the end under the anode cap. And in case we get a pop, I wanted to get it on video because I've never got a pop before. And I'm not touching the framework, trying not to touch the framework. Let's see if we get a pop here. See if I can get under the suction cup. Okay, I'm under. I'm going to slide in. Okay, I'm touching it and I'm not getting a pop. And this machine has just been on. If I push any harder, I'm probably going to dislodge this anode cap. But, uh, so, in my eyes, this must be a chassis that discharges, you know, the CRT must automatically discharge it somehow. But I'm still touching it, and I'm going to do like they always do in the videos, and like everyone says, just wait a few minutes. I'm going to pull the screwdriver out, and I'm going to try it again in just a few minutes. So we're going to cut away for this right now, and just, uh, I'll cut back in.